Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Today, we'll be talking about the things that consist of spiritual doctrine, that make up spiritual doctrine. And again, we have Apostle Shaul, Apostle Paul, talking to uh, the saints that are spread out that are in Colossus. So it's, uh, you know, this is an epistle of Apostle Paul to the, to the Colossians. So not Galatians, Colossians. That's C O L O S S I A N S. Colossians, second chapter. King James Version. And it reads For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as not, have not seen my face in the flesh. Because they were desiring Paul, but they had yet they hadn't seen him. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. And see how he's speaking now uh, about the Father, the Son, and he's even he's even bringing in the Holy Ghost uh, uh, in that sense, not saying in a Trinity sense, but saying it in because I gave a message on Trinity. You can look that up for that word trinity and how people get it all you know so but anyway this is uh paul writing this epistle in this letter uh to the colossians saying that i know you desire to see me but although you haven't seen me yet i want your hearts to be knit together in love i want you to be about peace i want you to be about the full understanding of the mystery you know of the one they call god all right i'm gonna read that again Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. I'm going to start from 1. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, like knitting, knit together, sewn together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. See, today some people ask the questions, well, what is this? What is that? How do we know it's a real God? I don't believe in the Bible. I don't, you know, all this confusion. And, and the Most High is not the author of confusion. But he's saying the full under, assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. And of course, in the last days, you're going to have enemies of the cross, enemies of the Most High's people and all these kind of things anyway that comes with it. Uh, ye that live godly going to suffer persecution. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers us out of them all. We have to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. So this whole thing, long suffering is one of the fruits of the Spirit. But anyway, let's continue. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Because there's always somebody trying to entice you, or they have a seducing spirit, or a doctrine of a devil uh, trying to bring about an evil to beguile you, to, to bewitch you, to get you out of the path of, of spiritual doctrine. And the scriptures even say in the last days, some people won't be able to endure sound doctrine. Like they won't be able to handle um, the power of the scriptures of walking in holiness or trying to please the Most High, even though we fall short of the glory of the Most High. But, you know, they, they just won't, they, like, I'm tired of hearing about the Bible. I'm tired, and we're seeing that even in this last day. But heaven and earth shall pass away. But his word will be here forever. Hallelujah. Go ahead and say hallelujah seven times and get the most highest praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 All praises. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit. See? Now he's, he's still speaking on spiritual doctrine. Joining and beholding your order. And the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. So he, he knows about that the saints are growing. The, the Colossians, the saints at Colossus, they're growing. They're, they're, he's hoping they stay knit together in love even though they haven't seen him in a while. Because Paul's going about strengthening, confirming, establishing the churches. Trying to revisit them and build them up. And bring the doctrine, the spiritual doctrine where of Christ where it was not preached yet. Because he's not trying to preach after another man. And it talks about that in the scripture. But he's saying, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. And a lot of times that's how it is when you haven't seen one of the saints in a long time. You just know, unless you're just dealing with a weak uh, 
uh, someone that's very weak and their faith is weak and you know but you want to help the weak let the weak say I'm strong but some are just already gonna go back like Lot's wife just go right on turn around and go right back uh, to the world to Sodom and Gomorrah to whatever it is that has uh, called them but those that are that are, are rooted and grounded let us continue as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk ye in him see what does it say rooted and built up in him yes. and established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving so even all this stuff you want to be and everything you want to be, be thanks giving thanks to the most high are we not talking about the holiday thanksgiving all right now check it out beware this is what it's saying be aware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after tra the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. See what it's saying? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. So, because there's some people trying to spoil folks with some philosophy. Have no proof, have no root, have no foundation. Definitely don't have the Holy Ghost, don't have the Spirit. But they're coming off of this, this, you know, these doctrines of devils, these seducing spirits, as the Bible calls them, trying to seduce you with uh, philosophy. And things like that, and like the message I gave last week, falsely called science, as the Bible said, is falsely called science. These some of these things are the mysteries of the most high. But people say, Oh, it's just science and stuff like that. Not coming against science or technology. I'm saying some people just rule out the most high, the creator altogether, and they give all their praise to science. Uh, things of that nature. But this is saying, so beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So it's like after the studies of, of, of this world. For in Christ, check it, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Hallelujah. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, and that's what happens when you get baptized, you are acknowledging his death. You ain't just dipping in the water, you know. Hallelujah. So you're being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and being baptized in his name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. But that also is a representation of his his death and his resurrection. And that's what, and the washing of the water is not for the dirt of the body, but the consciousness of sin. That's why we can go to the altar and repent when we do fall. Because the blood of bulls and rams and goats in the Old Testament, it wasn't pleasing the Father. So he sent his only begotten son. Hallelujah. And that his blood for his people. Hallelujah. That's what counts. And there's power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Doom, 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 of the land. Maybe I'll play that a little later on the keys. I know I played it already. Anyway, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who have raised him from the dead. And that we just, just said. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses. Now that's a reason to shabak him and be hallelujah. His blood, that's how we get our repentance. We don't have to sprinkle the priest with blood and kill goats and bulls and rams and any other thing. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So those handwritten ordinances, you can't do this, you can't do that. I'm not talking about the commandments, we're talking about Ordinances that man was setting up these different things that you you know that these uh, Pharisees and Sadducees and other heresies sects were doing and look what Christ did having spoiled principalities and powers He made a show of them openly triumphing over triumphing over them in it So what is that saying on the cross when they looked and said oh surely he was the son of God and the, the veil was torn meaning he went to the holiness holiest of holies that's when they was like, oh, snap, he really is the son <laughs> of the most high. Hallelujah. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. 
Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which Sabbath starts Friday evening all through Saturday to Saturday evening. That is the Sabbath. That's Shabbat. All right. That's why we say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Sabbath Shalom. Peace meet peace unto you. All right. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. And yep, a shadow of things to come. Let no man beguile you of your reward. So you don't let nobody trick you up when you run in this race with, with uh, patience to the end, looking forward to the author and finisher of your faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross and despised the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I think that's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. But anyway, now listen to what some people are doing. So it says, let no man beguile you of your reward, like your crown in heaven, in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which he have not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind look how paul talking check it let no man beguile you let no man like though he trick you or bewitch you of your reward in a voluntary humility see they'd be all about i'm so i'm humble i'm i'm just gonna show my humility and i'm gonna start worshiping angels and they start worshiping fallen angels and things like that what the Bible said, intruding, intruding, going into the, into those things which he have not seen. They don't even know what they're getting into. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. See, it's that flesh, flesh mind. It ain't spiritual. It's a carnal mind. The Bible said carnal mind lead to death. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Not having the head, meaning the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's what we're talking about. Right? For the head of every woman is man. The head of every man is Christ. And the head of Christ is God. Thus saith the Lord. The Bible. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ. Remember we talked about baptism. Dying with him. To, that's what the, the symbolism is of it. We just read it. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world. And we talk about the rudiments. The studies. The little inventions and stuff that are worldly. Why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? He's talking about these ordinances, and it is like touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Because these are commandments and doctrines of men. And a lot of things that man has established. Now, what we're talking about is ordinances in those times. We're not talking about laws. But the Bible said we're going to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. We must. And the law was a schoolmaster until Christ. Christ became the law. But we don't do away with the commandments. You know what I mean? A lot of people say, well, they say that the um, Old Testament is done away. The, the Bible said the Old Testament is what I just mentioned. Bulls, rams, goats. Those sin offerings were the testament. But Christ's blood is the New Testament, the new covenant, the blood. That doesn't mean to do away with the whole Old Testament as in Scripture. It's talking about the sin offerings that they gave in the Old Testament. Because y'all surely don't do away with that. Give a tenth of your earnings as it says in Malachi, the third chapter, 10%. That's in Old Testament. You ain't doing away with that, though, is you? So anyway, and all of the prophecies. Look what all the prophets are prophesying. We're going to go back to our home. That's all in the Old Testament. So you know you can't be doing, doing away with all of that. But Christ, that's what we all here for. All right, he's the author and finisher of our faith. All right, but look what, what Paul was saying. He was saying all that stuff is after the commandments and doctrines of men. You know, they want to indoctrinate this guy because this blah, 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 blah. So we're not coming at uh, studies that people do and things like that to succeed and survive. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about these, these uh, ordinances and things that are against the Most High, against faith that uh, gets you, beguile you, that gets you out of the way of uh, the truth and the life. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will, worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. So it doesn't honor and praise and glorify the most. I just does stuff to satisfy the flesh. And it shows like, I'm so humble. I'm this and that. Yeah, but you're in the wrong doctrine. You know, you might say, I'm not doing this, I'm doing that. But you don't have the risen Savior. So how are you going to rise? You haven't been baptized, you know, to live again. You know, you've got all these things. That's what the scriptures are saying. Don't get caught up in all these things that people are saying. But get into the spiritual doctrine. Hallelujah. Love you all. Shalom.